that first play to seven, that plan for a while, you knew you were going to take a big shot on first play? Yeah, I mean, we just wanted to be aggressive. You know, you want to put pressure on the defense. So we tried to treat, uh, treat the spring game like a game. How much of what this offense is going to be in the fall, like, do, do you feel like we saw here and how much more install is left for the fall? I mean, I wouldn't know if there's a ton of install. I mean, every game you're going to have specific plays that you install specifically for that game. So I think we've gotten the base of it in, right? We're now to that point where, you know, you've got to put some game plan things in. But I would say the, the base of it's in. A couple days to maybe review just what happened in the game day atmosphere. Just what are your takeaways from it? Unbelievable atmosphere. I mean, over 40,000 people at a spring game. Loud. I mean, when they played shout and going into the fourth quarter, I mean, it's awesome. I mean, I'm in the box and it's sunny. It's the skies are blue, and I oversee the mountains right from the box, and the crowd's going crazy. And then in the far corner, you see some a snow top mountain, right? And it's just like pretty cool place, pretty cool place. You guys are, are pretty deep at wide receiver, saw some good performances on Saturday. What's your kind of philosophy on like the four wide receiver set? Because you just want to get those guys on the field, I would think. They just want to put your best players on the, on the field and give them the best position to be successful. I mean, that's that's what you know this offense is about is how can we get our playmakers in space. Uh, who are the playmakers and how do we get them in space? How do you think Troy and Dante in particular, from what you inherited getting here to where they are now at the end of 15 practices, how different are they? How much more developed are they after the last yeah, six weeks? Yeah, I, I, uh, I think Coach Adams is one of the best wideout coaches in the profession. I mean, you look at his track record of developing wide receivers, and I think those guys are, you know, some of his next pupils that are, that are going to follow in the footsteps of some of the guys like Cooper Cup that he's had in his past. And uh, they've just come to work every day. And uh, it's been that entire room has just grown so much, you know, top to bottom. Is, in your, I'm curious in your opinion on this, in overhauling any position group on offense, what do you think is the most difficult, in general, not saying here now in this instance, but in general, do you think is quarterback the most difficult? Is the wide receiver room the most difficult? The I, I, th I think it depends. I think it just depends on your roster and the team dynamics. I think anytime that those situations happen, it's more team dynamic. You know, football is about culture. It's about developing a culture more than it is X's and O's. I mean, all, all the plays that we had all spring, they sound really, really good. But if your guys don't have a, we talked about it today, the practice afterwards, if we didn't have a, a willing to compete and go get better today, then nothing matters. Absolutely nothing matters. If we don't have the culture and the mindset of the growth of today's practice is what the, is going to define the football team because that's the last thing we had. Can you speak to Chase Curtis' ability to make some contested catches? He had six catches for 100 yards, but there were some catches that kind of wowed like, some crowd. He had some really contested catches over and between defenders. Can you just talk about his performance? Yeah, I think he did a really nice job. I mean, guy who came in and, you know, going back to the culture piece, our guys love him. You know, when, when you're a transfer and you come in, there's, there's two types of vibes you could get. You could be the outcast or you could be one of the guys. And our guys, you see them posting on social media about Coda and the vet and all that stuff. And it's great to see our guys just embrace him because this is home for, for, for Chase. And to see him make plays, to see our guys embrace him is pretty special. How do you whole, keep up the momentum that you and you and the players have built up throughout the spring and keep it in, going into the fall and the summer? I think it's about work. I mean, you gotta you gotta buy into the growth. I mean, we talk a ton of the growth mindset, which means good play, bad play, doesn't matter. How can you grow? So I think it's all about can our guys continue to have the mindset of growth? What can I do today to grow? Good, bad, and different. It doesn't matter. Can I get better? Can I grow from it? There's always something to grow from. As a whole, how is this spring ball compared to maybe other places you've been in? Now that's kind of done, and you can look at it in retrospect. I mean, I think our guys worked. Uh, that goes into the growth mindset. Growth mindset, people don't compare to other people. So I'm not going to do that. You know, growth mindset is the very best we can be. And I truly believe our guys, you know, it was funny because Seven McGee, you know, he said it even after the game in his media, you know, I made some good plays, but what can I get better at? When you start to hear our guys say that, when you start to, and you can feel it at times in the meeting room that they fully believe that, man, if I just keep getting better every day, if I can grow, that's how you become really, really good. And I think that is, uh, to answer your question, kind of a scapegoat out. But uh, I felt like our guys started to buy into that belief that we just got to get better every single day. We didn't see Byron on Saturday, but what have you seen from him this spring to give you the confidence that he can be a, a lead? Phenomenal, lead phenomenal. I mean, Byron did a great job for us this spring. I think he had a, a scrimmage where he had like 170 yards or something like that, where he just went off. So uh, I think he did. I think he did a good job, and I'm fired up to see him this this uh, fall. After watching film that. a little bit, how how would you assess the quarterback room on Saturday? Yeah, we got to get better. I think we put the ball in jeopardy too many times. I think we had uh, two two throws that caused interceptions, and we had uh, four to five misreads 
uh, that you know we put the ball in jeopardy when we didn't have to because we didn't uh, account for that player with our eyes. Anytime you don't account for a player with your eyes, you're putting the ball in jeopardy because you don't know who's back there. And I think we did that four or five times, and it's something to grow from. And I think we watched the tape, and hopefully we get it corrected. Even if there's competition to continue at the position, how do you leave spring in terms of Bo, Ty, Jay? <laughs> yeah, I, I love where we are. I think we got a really, really deep quarterback room. I think we got a ton of talent in that room, and I think they, they've gotten better. And, I mean, if you talk to all of them, they can all, we all talk about the growth they've made just from a – how they think about the game, the growth they've made in pass protections, right? It's a completely different way to attack, and uh, I think they've gotten a lot better, and I'm really pleased with where they are. What do you have to do between now and the start of fall camp? There's specific goals. I think, you know, Ty, we're trying to bring his eyes with his feet more, eyes with his feet more. Bo, we're trying to not make a bad play worse, right? And, ja and uh, Jay, all we're trying to do is get his drops down a little bit quicker so we can get the ball a little faster. So I think they all have some, an individual goal to grow off of, and I think they can take that into the summer and they can try to improve and try to grow. Is there a target date for when you want to have a starter no. identified? Nope.